movie hasn't started. Hello everybody, welcome to another Let's Play. Today we are doing The Deadly Tower of Monsters. One of my favorite small games, I have never beat it actually. Um, I've only got to play it in smaller doses because real life. So we're going to see how far we can get today. This game is unique in that it is a love letter to old black and white movies. Schlocky movies that were horror and sci-fi are my favorite. I grew up in the 80s, so movies like Monster Squad are always on my playlist. The original Ghostbusters, um... Hey, is this thing on? Can you hear me alright? Yeah, all good. The director basically talks all the way through it. Now, I had a, a file here, but we're actually gonna delete it, because I, I want to do this the right way. So you guys get the full experience. Uh, so I'm dedicated to this. Uh, actually, I just reinstalled this not long ago. I had to run this a few times to fix the screen settings. And you see what I mean? You already see like the wires holding everything up. Oh, Dan Smith here. I directed this film back in, uh, well, <laughs> it feels like a century ago. Yeah. The studio asked me to provide a commentary track for the DVD release. I'm not gonna lie, I, I, would, I always thought it would be awesome to record my own Freddy movie like this. Would you guys watch it if we did one for the channel? Like I'm talking a real full length cheesy movie with the wires and the uh, things like that and props and... Would you all watch it? The ship's velocity reactor is damaged. I believe that I am stranded on an alien. Played, of course, by actor Jonathan Digby. Went right. on to some minor roles after this. Uh, such a shame. I thought from day one this guy's got leading man written all over his face. I've often asked why Dick breaks these boxes. He actually had lived it. I told Jonathan. Always keep things exciting. Yeah, I love the graphics for this game. Gloria, I am Dick Starspeed, and I come in peace. Yeah. Probably shouldn't have had Dick draw his weapon when he was talking about peace. Well, maybe one day we'll go back and CG it into a sandwich or something instead. Ha! Just kidding. And this is what people pay to see. A no-name middle-aged B-list actor duking it out with stuntmen in costumes. Such stunning choreography. And the extras in those robot suits really knew how to take a punch. Oh, literally. I told Jonathan not to hold back. Give it all to him. Kick him in the nuts. And bolts. <laughs> And I know what you're thinking, but don't worry. We handled it responsibly. We made them all sign waivers not to sue for injuries. I love that that's responsibly. Also, the CGI uh, pterodactyls were amazing. Yes. I can't remember if the light me. How in the hell do I... If I land squarely on that green silo, I should survive oh, this fall. I guess there we go. Tells me. I shouldn't say this now, but you could actually see the springs if you squinted hard enough. <laughs> a screenwriting trick from back in the old days. You put a grain silo or some haystacks down and it solves all your gravity-related problems. Sorry guys, I know I'm gonna look really shoddy on this, and, uh, like, my playing is gonna be a little stiff here at first because I'm getting used to it again. Um, I actually had a second Let's Play done. My ship was shot down. But what luck! This high-tech scanner reports that my ray gun is nearby. Good. That's what I need is a high-tech scanner and a ray gun. I need both of those. I love the dinosaurs, and that's cracking me up here. You can tell they try to do step motion. And I think that's. Uh, yeah. I, I still agree. Hell. 
Um, let me know what you guys think. Do you think movies are over CGI now? I'm not talking about movies that obviously need it. Like, you can do Guardians of the Galaxy and do Rocket Raccoon without CGI. You could try it. But, uh... I mean movies like, uh... The one that I always hated were these vampire movies, uh... Everybody loved Underworld. I was not a huge Underworld guy. I thought they were alright, but... And I had no problem with the character. It wasn't that. It was the blood. Because they are. I took them from the set of my last film, Vampire Island 2. Um, and that's what it was. Alright. Now we're playing with power, guys. Also, kudos if you know what that's from. You should. If you don't... Share of nasty letters from scientists complaining about our portrayal of the dinosaurs was news to me. Apparently, these stegosauruses weren't meat eaters, must have preferred shellfish or something. Wow, well, how do they know? That's what I say. I, I love it. I love the director in this. Other people are like, he's an asshole, and I'm like, he's, he's supposed to be. That's he's a schlocky film director. Oh no, I'm actually stuck. Are you serious? Thank you, Brontosaurus, my nemesis, for actually freeing me from that. Um, but one thing that I really dug about this game, if I'm being honest here, is that it had so much charm with the director, everybody else, it had, uh... Alright. It was just a good love letter to old cheesy films. And you know, like I said, I grew up with some of those. Um, if you were lucky enough to be alive in the 80s as a kid, and you remember Elvira, and her show, it was an awesome show that even got uh, mimicked in the movie Terrorism, the horror movie Terrorism, that had a Elvira spin-off type lady. Um, Elvira's real first name was Cassandra. I do know that. I cannot remember for life me her real last name. I used to know that too. My brother had a, a thing for Elvira. Um, but no, she used to play old black and white horror movies. Back then you didn't have cable. Imagine a world without cable TV. That's what I grew up with. If you need proof of it, watch the movie Gremlins, the guy's pickup line to Phoebe Kate's female actress, the waitress in the bar, is, hey babe, I've got cable, we're talking 20 channels here. And it was like, what? That's your, that's your pickup line? But, you know, you think that then, there were people who would have been impressed by that, because... 20 channels? What the heck do you have on 20 it's channels, you know? I mean, it was... Um... Our props master tried to make I actually missed... Saw, missed... There's only so much you can do. Those, like... Cheesy shows. Maybe one day if I ever do good enough with my YouTube channel. Maybe I'll host one. On, uh, on YouTube if I can with movies that are... Public domain or something. I don't know, maybe that'll be something we do, I don't know. I really don't know, to be honest with you. I'd be curious about it. How curious. They dissolved into what appears to be gold. Um, I also do like that this game does address Sally Elephants in the Ring with things like... When Dick touches it. We had a deleted scene that explained he's actually teleporting it back to his ship. See, so they do cover... No one ever questioned how Dick was able to walk around with an infinite amount of gold on him. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So they do, they mock the conventions of action games and things like that in this game. And also, while doing it, disguise it with, uh... Actually, some really decent lighting and effects here for a bird's eye view game. They put a lot of effort into this. Um, just an all around amazing game, guys. If you do not own this game, you should own it. I would recommend this game to all of you, to anyone. You can see it's easy to play. Um, 
Just a few keyboard controls and mouse controls, but what you get out of it is voice checking. And the second you take your eyes off of them, they're flinging their feces all over the place. Uh, refused to work with him after he got a... Um, well, it, let, let's just say that he uh, had to take more than a couple of showers one day. You know, you never forget the smell of monkey poo. We steam cleaned the studio top to bottom. Still never got rid of it entirely. All through the rest of the shot, we kept finding those little surprises hiding inside various props. Boy, <laughs> were those the days. Um, I mean, the director's commentary alone is more than some of the stuff you get in some games. And it's such a clever idea, I think, to just do a big sort of I think I remember this guy now. Yep, this is trouble. Some really top-notch stop-motion effects, huh? Unfortunately, we skipped on the Dick Starspeed puppet a little. <laughs> Freaking puppet! You can tell us this is so horrible. The Earth Man is not for you to eat, fiend. Uh, when you actually get the game, you get a calendar, although I think it's only like a 2017 calendar. We were really ahead of our time with this scene, but then again, I've always been a bit regressive. The studio exec didn't seem to get why it was such a big deal, though. Sorry, we don't see this as anything unusual. Ha! Of course! It's unusual! A woman would never save the man! It just doesn't happen! Not in the movies, not in real life. I don't know why we didn't get more recognition for this scene. Well, I guess I was just a little too ahead of my time. Obviously, you see what's going on here. This guy's just playing the last asshole. But, uh, it made him funny as well. Is your name? Strange woman. I am the magnificent Scarlet Nova. Yeah, if you get this game, you get a Scarlet Nova calendar. Uh, and they had an actress to actually do these like sci-fi schlocky poses, and she's dressed in that outfit. So this so one. So we'll be seeing our first example of teleportation being used by Scarlet right here. Huh? Where is this place? This is not my father's chambers. <laughs> you have disobeyed me for the final time, Scarlet. Enjoy an eternity in the Tower of Eternal Solitude for all eternity. <laughs> The old fool did not notice I am wearing my jetpack. Booster usage. Jump. Wait. Wait. Use booster. Survive deadly fall. Oh man, I love that so much. Let's get... alright. Oh, that's right. You can also do this thing, which is cool. Uh, Scarlet didn't quite realize she needed to shoot those energy orbs down below. Keep in mind, Stacy was doing this on a sound stage, okay? Uh, but you see what I mean, like... They do some amazing stuff with this here. Where it is one of those, you think to yourself, how in the world did they even come up with this? As far as the game goes, it was definitely one of my favorites. Uh, when I, I first... I 
when I first even heard of this, I was pretty impressed with the concept, the idea of it, and I didn't really think much of it. Um, at the time, until I kept watching other people play it, and I'm like, man, that does look amazing. Wow, uh, I want to meet that game. So, yeah. It was quite fun, actually. Um, so, yours truly is all over getting this. And I believe that this actually, I got this. Ah, the um, energy imps. Such a neat effect. We had to paint each movement frame by frame and superimpose it into live footage. We were pulling all nighters for weeks. Well, when I said we, I meant the artists. I'm pretty much useless if I don't get a solid 10 hours a night. But they ten hours, man. Forever. I only got 10 hours a night. Ages. I had to redo it all because I accidentally told them red instead of blue the first time. Uh, artists. I love that his answer isn't just to. Literally just to change the wording then. Instead, it's to make them redo them all night again in a different color. Curses! My father revoked my access to the teleport terminals. I shall only be able to utilize the ones I activate manually. Plot point. See, I do like to think of this, so I think this is uh, just an amazing game. Very, very fun. I'm excited to show you guys this, because if you haven't ever played this, please play this. You should definitely play this. This is an amazing game. Ah, I knew you would return. Puny Earthman, you shall help me overthrow the Emperor. <laughs> puny Why Earthman. would you turn against your own father? How do I know I can trust you? Ah, uh, this scene. This is practically Shakespeare in outer space. Just as the entire planet does. And, uh, huh? Patrick, what's wrong with the video? Ah, uh, sorry, sir. Technical problems. Darn it, we're missing some really good writing here. There. Sorry about that. Well, we just passed right by her big scene. <laughs> Basically, they agree to work together, but one must stay behind in the sleep chamber at all times. You see how this game works? So... Ah, uh, never mind. I'll continue from here. Just have one of them in there, and now you get to swap between the three of them. So it is a very interesting right dynamic. from the start, our budget was a little tight, even by standards back then. To make do, Tony shot a couple of scenes in black and white. Originally, he intended to use it for flashbacks, but then I had to break it to him. Our film doesn't have flashbacks. We almost made it a silent film just to cut costs. I felt it was an absolute necessity we have a T-Rex in this film, but we got this Serato thing instead. Of course, I went through the whole production thinking it was a T-Rex because, really, who can tell the difference anyway? The ironic part is that the Ceratosaurus is related to the T-Rex, so you still got a T-Rex. <sighs> I used to want to be a paleontologist when I grew up. It's true. It would appear that now is the time for us to climb the deadly Tower of Monsters. Oh, the way they say it. Good screenwriting 101. Always announce the title within the film itself. How else are you going to let the audience know your heroes really mean business? Now, that weapon, it's just an electric shaver, but you know, I bet you'd never guess it was, would you? And for those of you laughing right now, you know Lucas is in a uh, shaver in one of his films. This is true. The communicator for the prequel Star Wars films is actually just a modified, uh, well, doctored up, uh, Lady Gillette. It was like a Venus. And they just spray painted them silver and added in a few bolts and uh, like glued the bolts on, sprayed the whole thing silver, and there's your communicators. Um, 
Um, Lucas used a lot of practical effects. Speaking of practical effects, who else is excited about there being a sequel to Killer Clowns? The Chorito Brothers, the guy who did the original, wanted to do it for ages. Um, but they found out afterwards that they were able to... some of our meetings with the studio. Oh, you'd like to see records of where our budget went to this month? Sure, let me get that for you right now. Fool, fool. Yeah, this one's kind of interesting. This screen, because you can change it each time. Ooh, what do I think? Let's pick a zapper, or do not a zapper. We're gonna, we're gonna make his energy upgrades. Charge his energy upgrade. You know what, I know what I meant. No. Ranged weapons, eventually you can seep them up in a number of ways. But no, I mean, uh, I if you've never seen Tech and Killer Clowns, you should see it. If you're scared of clowns, that's why you haven't seen it. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's not gonna help your fear of clowns. Um, even though it's a healthy film, the clowns are still terrifying looking. And actually, the masks are quite impressive for a small studio. Um, but if you do like healthy movies and you haven't seen it, what the hell are you waiting for? Go see it. It's fantastic. Um, they did practical effects. They paid an exuberant amount for like a gun that shot popcorn up before they realized they could do more practical effects. They talk about it on the director's commentary, I think, that all this stuff they ended up spending money on if they really didn't have to, and later on they learned a lot about practical effects and going cheaper um, with that and how to cut corners on, on some of their props in the prop department. And it's a very fascinating thing if you do like the movies. That's I recommend watching it with the director's commentary, even if you've seen it a lot. Make that one that you do watch with the commentary on. Um, just because it does give you some insight into B movies, so if you like that sort of thing, which I do, you might, I don't know. And I, I highly recommend it. Um, so I do find it very fascinating because of that. Personally, I do. I feel like this is a movie that would do well now if it got made just because you have so many hipsters. They would see it and be like, oh, I saw the original. There was no original. Um, you know, hipsters. They always oh, see the, the original. Uh, some board member had these nephews who really wanted to be in the films. Uh, they made me cast them as squids. Whatever happened to artistic integrity? If you're going to cast a role not on merit, at least let it be a hot female role. <laughs> that one is such a wrong joke. My effects team kept assuring me the strings wouldn't be visible in the final cut, but I could see them. No, no transparent nylon. This stuff will do the trick. Yeah, right. I swear those darn strings is what made my hair go white. I don't know what I did there, but you saw me look up to the corner of the screen. It's because somebody on my friends list that's uh just dropped down. I was playing a game on Steam and I did not expect it to come from up there, at least comes from the lower right hand corner, so um the ironic part of all this is really I got into Steam because I wanted to see what this portal game everybody was talking about was. So I bought the orange box. And that was my introduction in the scene. I've done combo bundles over the years. Jump. While in the air, 
use teleport. Quickly return to upper floor. Huh. I'm not quite sure why you use that again, but I'm sure I'll find out. These guys are normally zap whenever I can with your dicks. But... Now that I'm looking at it, all I really need to do is start making better use of my god, which I'm not doing. I forgot all about that too. So I, I need to start using some of these fancy. Oh, fancy fancy things. I actually didn't use the air teleport, but I don't remember why I didn't do that. I feel like I had a reason. Not like that up. Um, but no, so, after all the years and doing all that stuff, uh, I believe my life right now is about... Uh, we're in the 584 number for game zone. And then I left some cake out in my trailer, and it was crawling with ants in the morning. And that's when it hit me. What is the most obnoxious thing in the world? Yeah, see, we got all of these. But no, I mean, that's just. And it's not that I spent a fortune, it is that I've been very thrifty and smart when buying things and knowing to buy them and when not to. And that has done me a decent service. Um, there is still an exuberant amount of games I do not own that I would love to. You look at my wish list, I have like 80 games on it, I think. That sucked. That was dumb. So yeah, not a fun moment right there. Um, that I do not yet own. So, please do not think I'm some daddy warbucks who just goes around buying games all day. Um, not to mention, a lot of the time now, lately, has been spent dealing with real life matters. So, if you notice, I haven't been doing as many of these, which I do apologize for, guys. Um, it's been a royal pain in the tail, for one thing. I don't have a gold one for any of these. It's my current weapon. That one needs to have to upgrade. Super space baton or balls in your baton. So there, if I get that, that's what I want. So I, I don't remember yet, but that's what I wanted all the time. Now we have balls in our baton guys. That's just what I need to Makes it all better, maybe. I do. We're actually gonna get her get her out if I can. No we're not. No we yeah. Needs to rest. No. I suppose it doesn't matter. Apparently it just transfers right away. Well that's crazy. Oh no! This head belonged to my co-pilot robot. He was the most loyal companion in the galaxy. Oh, that's right, that the robot on his. Malfunction. Dick. Malfunction. These Gravorians will pay dearly for this, my friend. Now, what's a space adventure film without a trusty robot sidekick, huh? Am I right? In the original draft, we had Dick and Scarlet team up with an alien from the planet's surface. You know the type, pointy ears, wise and emotionless. Uh, but then we came to our senses and realized that a giant tin can robot's way cooler. <laughs> Besides, everybody was doing the alien thing back then. You know me, I'd rather be a trailblazer. 
I believe as a kid, I felt lied to. I just don't there are no cool talking robots in real life. I even at some point asked my parents for talking robots. I was not granted talking robots, and I was like, what is this nonsense? Where are my talking robots? Uh, so yeah. It's a true story, I actually asked for a talking robot when I was younger. A robot buddy, I think I called him. Uh, that I wanted for Christmas. And my dad just looked at me, and my mom looked at me, and they were like, no. Like, there, there really isn't, you can't. It's not a real thing. And I was like, what? The Jetsons had one? I didn't get it, because I was like, oh. um, But yeah, so, it's a true story. I actually really was met that, how dare you? What do you mean these don't exist? Why wouldn't they? Of course they don't exist, kid. But yeah, that was that weird about it. I like that I see that was that weird. That was that weird. That's about how weird I was. Exactly that weird. Okay. Okay, this is the armory. So let's... This one here is one of my other ones. I can upgrade anything right now. Is this the army? This might be the army. It is. Okay. These are easy because they're on the airplane. Okay. I really need some health, man. Very desperately. I'm doing horribly. I used to not do half this bad. Back in the day, like, I wouldn't have even. I do apologize, guys. I'm getting a horrible let's play today of this. By now, normally, I wouldn't be half this bad. Now, we had another game I was actually shooting a video for, and it would not... It crashed a few times. It was not great, so... It did not love my, uh... It did not love Windows. So, I don't know. actors fell off the set one too many times. Granted, they kept falling off even with the rails, but... Thanks to how the contract was laid out, we were no longer liable for their injuries. How about that she's not even hitting me? How about that? Okay, I'm not gonna that shit. For some reason, my, uh, whatchamacallit seems to stick a little here. I do not know. My movement is sticking slightly. We definitely need to upgrade our health. Oh, shit. Oh. Uh, nothing for her, sadly. Get this puppy open, baby. I need to... Open. Gentlemen, I guess it's time to talk about the elephant in the room. Why on earth does this crazy film have title cards on screen when people aren't talking? You're thinking that, aren't you? I know you are. I would be too. Well, we had thought about making it a silent film at one point, so we shot a lot of scenes up close like this with the dialogue written out for the audience to read. Well, when we swapped over to making a talkie, well, we just decided to keep on going rather than reshooting all the scenes. I actually feel like talkie was the real word that they used back then for this sort of thing. I'm pretty sure it was. At least that's what I believe anyway. I'm not sure, but I think so.
Way too vulnerable to being killed right now. That is not going to go well, my friend. Right, look at all these. Um, I'm going to hold on health wise, but I do not remember why in hell I did not get another one going. You know. I guess I don't think you do, but maybe you do. Yeah, see, it keeps getting stuck in some way from here. Uh, I don't want to blame the game. Maybe it's just a thing of how it's made, I don't know. But, uh, or maybe it's just Windows being a dick. I don't know, it updated yesterday, so... I am not disheveled enough. Do you think that Windows does not have its horrible flaws? Windows has very horrible flaws. It's like a never-ending supply of free food all day long. I never had to pay for a single meal. Hey, Patrick, I noticed you guys don't do that here in your studio. You should talk to your boss. Maybe even just a bagel station. Ironically, for those of you that are Avengers, um, if you haven't seen the interviews, that Joe Saldana was talking about how good Robert Downey Jr.'s craft service table was, so that when she was doing the Avatar, she would go, because their, their sets were near each other when he was doing Iron Man 1, that she would go and go to his craft services table because it had better food. So that's pretty funny. Which I believe Jimmy Kimmel replied that's because it takes them 14 years to do one movie. But yeah, Iron Man 1 was a long time in the making. The Tom Cruise he wanted to be in it originally. Uh, I'm glad he was not, because he wanted to not have to wear the armor with a mask. And it was like, have you ever seen Iron Man? Have you read Iron Man? You have to have the mask. His nickname is Shellhead. You can't not do the mask, man. So yeah, a lot of people are not real with that. Fireballs. It's not like I gave them neck frills or had them spit poison or anything ridiculous like that. A little stab at Jurassic Park there. A little stab at Jurassic Park, baby. That's all. It's playful, right? It's playful. Oh uh, yeah, that one I think is funny. I don't know. I feel like I like the Tesla gun room for now. Uh, we're gonna go with this one. Yeah, I like that better. Right. I gotta she starts back there, guys. Look forward. <laughs> it's funny as hell. I'm too easily amused, aren't I? This is my life now, right here. I'm literally laughing uh, about somebody just running back and forth. What is wrong with me? But yeah, I mean, it is funny, let's be honest here. I don't know, I just found the, the walk hilarious. Clearly, I'm too easily used right now. So we're gonna get out of this in a moment. It's funny. Holy cow, this is going to be a long video. I haven't done a video this long in a while. I normally don't do longer ones anymore because, frankly, uh, a lot of the time it just doesn't pay to do a long As one. luck would have it, the next lot to ours was filming some horror movie set in Transylvania. So we signed a soft contract with them to use their set after they wrap for the day. And by that, I mean we kind of snuck in and filmed it real quick when no one was looking. <laughs> I had my assistant Phyllis keep a lookout for the security guards. I love how shady this guy is. This is funny. Very tongue-in-cheek. 
this guy. My nose is a little bad away off, as you know. Tongue in cheek. You ever, like, think anything weird about sayings like that when you're younger? Like, what are, what are they talking about? I don't um, I think I told this story before, but one of my things when I was younger was... Yeah, I'm sure you've all heard the 80s song, I wear my sunglasses at night. For some reason, as a child, that wasn't even my favorite 80s song. So I don't know why that one, but I used to dance to that song. I Like, when you put that song on, I would just breathe. I'd just chill out. Be like a little thing like this and dance and stuff. I don't even know why that song was the song. Um, but that was the song, man. That wasn't even my favorite. I believe ECDC I liked a lot when I was younger. Um, still like ECDC. But I mean, you know. When I was a little kid, I never heard anything that sounded like that. I still haven't. I think that's part of my problem nowadays when some music that's out. I'm not one of these music sounds, don't get me wrong, but I do not like all the music I hear out now, that is true. But I have a reason behind it. It's not just because, oh, my bands are better, it's because I can't tell one from the other now. Um, what they call rock, to me, is not rock. Rock, to me, was rock. It's like, rock was real rock. What I hear now is not rock and roll means. I don't know. Very whiny and emo. You know, it's, it's like somebody said Panic at the Disco is rock, and I was like, no, they're not. It's not that they're. It, I'm not saying they're bad, you know, I'm just saying they're not rock. That is not rock. Rock is like the Rolling Stones, Foreigner. That's rock. You know, you get into some of these other bands, and they're not. That's not rock. And you hit classic rock, and of course you have to see Clayton's Clear, Clearwater Revival. Or I don't even know yet at that point. Originally, we shot this scene with Scarlet using the landmines, but then I came to my senses, and we reshot with Dick. I mean, a woman using high explosives? <laughs> This may be a science fiction, but we have to keep things at least somewhat believable. I wonder how many feminists are mad at this video game. Really nailed it. Dinosaurs, saucers, hey, you name it. But these, um, deflating rock boulder cubes, ah, not their best word. Just looks kind of odd, if you ask me, like giant whoopee cushions. And they said they could add some debris and explosions or two afterwards. And then we ran out of budget. Well, to be fair, we ran out of budget several times, but still, I lost a lot of sleep over these rocks. I like that that's where his scruple is, nowhere else. Anyways, guys, we're gonna call this quits here. Because as you can see, this sort of game is gonna take playing for ages. Which again is a testament to how good it is. So this is the Deadly Tower of Monsters. I am Bones. Thank you guys for watching. Hearing me reminisce a little. If I seem a little odd lately, um, I do apologize. As I've said in some other videos, we've gone like through a lot of physical uh, stuff lately and a lot of emotional stuff lately. Um, that I'm not going to bore y'all with again. But uh, rest assured, we're, we're getting back into the swing of things. So. We appreciate everybody's patience while we're going through this stuff, we're getting, getting things sorted, and, uh, and the mouse wheel here. And, uh, yeah, we are happy that you guys start out with us and check this out, and be sure to tune in for our next video. Thank you.